So good to have you join us today. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Kim Young Gil in Seoul. Let's get started with a look at today's highlights. Korea's Fair Trade Commission is urging large business groups to put more effort into ensuring fair market competition and sharing growth with smaller companies. Korea's Hamsung Group is undergoing a major reshuffle in its top management in a bid to guide the company onto a path of steady future growth. Stay tuned for these stories and more. The head of Korea's antitrust watchdog met with top executives of the country's major conglomerates on Thursday. He urged them to do more to earn public trust by rooting out questionable business practices while improving transparency. The watchdog gave them until the end of the year to show visible results. Our Kim Jian starts us off. Korea's antitrust watchdog chief says there's still a long way to go for the country's top conglomerates known as Tebars to achieve fair market competition and coexist with smaller companies. The chairman of the Fair Trade Commission, Kim Sang-jo, said this at a meeting on Thursday with management heads of five Tebars, the CFO of Korean tech giant Samsung Electronics, Lee Sang-un, Hyundai Motors President, Jung Jin-heng, SK Telecom CEO, Park Jung-ho, President of LG Corporation Ha Hyun Hwe and the head of Lotte Group's Management Innovation Division Hwang Gak Kyu. Kim urged them to do more to gain the public's confidence, reiterating what he said in a similar meeting in June when he asked Tebors to voluntarily carry out reforms to their convoluted governance structure so that their achievements could be shared with second-tier businesses and employees. While saying he understands such changes take time, can pressure them to make tangible improvements, giving them until the end of this year as a preliminary deadline. The meaning of the deadline is to give a grace period for companies to voluntarily carry out reforms, as well as taking into consideration the start of the regular parliamentary session at the National Assembly, in which the FTC has to devise the policy direction and pace of the government's table reforms. He also asked the management heads to make their decision-making process more transparent and warned that the watchdog may conduct an investigation into the profit system of some of the Tebor's holding companies, particularly on their loyalty and consulting payments, as well as the activities of non-profit organizations that they're funding. Kim also asked them to follow guidelines on corporate lobbying to root out corruptive acts and give penalties to employees that instigate conflict with their subcontractors. Kim Jian, Business Daily. A government think tank has upgraded Korea's economic growth forecast to 3.1 percent for this year, up 0.1 percent from its previous estimates. The revised outlook by the Korean Institute of Finance is higher than estimates from the Finance Ministry, the Bank of Korea and the International Monetary Fund. However, in the think tank's view, growth will likely slow to 2.8 percent next year on falling investments in construction and infrastructure. The institute cited monetary tightening by major central banks, mounting debt in China and geopolitical threats from North Korea as major downside risks for Asia's fourth largest economy. The U.S. Federal Reserve announced its November policy decision overnight as widely expected. It kept rates steady as it continues its balance sheet normalization program, which started last month. Attention is also on President Donald Trump, who is set to make an announcement on the next Fed chief later on this Thursday. Eunice Kim has this report. There were no big surprises in the Fed's November policy statement. In a unanimous vote, the Federal Open Market Committee kept its key interest rate at between 1 and 1 and a quarter percent, in light of below 2 percent inflation amid what it called solid economic activity, despite disruptions caused by the damaging hurricanes of September. While noting the aftermath of the natural disaster had led to a drop in payroll employment and a boost in inflation on the back of rising gasoline prices, 
The U.S. central bank viewed the effects as temporary and promised to carefully monitor actual and expected inflation developments in its commitment to foster maximum employment and price stability. The Fed also continues its balance sheet normalization program begun last month. Overall, the wording on the closely monitored statement showed little deviation from past stances, leading markets to believe the bank is on track for its third and final rate hike of the year in December. In early February of next year, Chair Janet Yellen's term is due to end, and increasingly a central bank insider is shaping up to fill her role. Various reports are pointing to Jerome H. Powell, a current Fed board member and a Republican, to be nominated by President Donald Trump later on this Thursday, ahead of his Asia tour. Powell, who has been with the Fed since 2012, has voted with the consensus, including four, the four interest rate hikes so far. If nominated and confirmed by the Senate, he's expected to keep policy on the current course. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. Let's now take a closer look at today's stock market action. The benchmark Cosby opened higher, surpassing the 2560 mark, but quickly dropped to negative territory on heavy selling from institutions, as it sold roughly $174 million worth of net shares. At the closing bell, the benchmark index fell 0.4% to end at 2546.36, while the tech-heavy Kosdaq dropped 0.12 to finish at 694.96. The Korean won strengthened to 1114.41 against the greenback. Retail investors, on the other hand, showed aggressive bullish sentiment, buying in roughly $139 million worth of net shares. Market kingpins Hamsung Electronics dipped about 0.28%, while Korea's largest chemical company LG Chem traded 1.33% higher. The implementation of a 40-hour work week here in Korea has led to higher labor productivity in the manufacturing industry by 1.5%. According to the Korea Development Institute, productivity rose 1.5% over a span of eight years among firms employing 10 or more workers. Labor productivity for companies with over 20 employees increased by roughly 2% in the same period. In light of this, experts say the wage system needs to be overhauled to compensate for productivity and efficiency instead of focusing solely on the number of working hours. Tomorrow, Friday, will mark 100 days since the internet-only Kako Bank launched in Korea, run by the country's leading messaging app Kako Talk. It's attracted more than 4 million clients as of October 20th. Customers have made deposits totaling 3.4 billion U.S. dollars, while the bank has extended 2.8 billion dollars worth of loans. Kako Bank offers easy-to-access financial services, from opening a bank account to applying for a loan using only a smartphone. Experts say the surge in new online accounts is forcing traditional brick-and-mortar banks to cut fees and revamp their services. Samsung Electronics has its next generation of leaders in place, all in their 50s, and well-suited to accelerate the pace of innovation with outstanding expertise in their fields. The news also comes after Samsung announced its highest ever quarterly profits, which nearly tripled compared to a year earlier. We take a look at what's at stake for the Korean tech giant's future. The world's biggest maker of semiconductors, televisions and smartphones replaced the leaders of its three main businesses. Samsung Electronics CEO Ko no Hyun resigned as of last month. There will be three new executives, each with a specific area of focus, with Kim Ginam heading up the components business, Kim hyun Suk taking the helm in consumer electronics, and Ko Dong-jin in charge of mobile and IT. The three men are expected to serve as co-chief executives once they are elevated to the company's board, a decision that requires shareholder approval. Hopes are high that the newly appointed team of bosses will better respond to challenges arising from the rapidly changing IT industry and set a new direction for the tech giant, currently worth some 350 billion US dollars. The news comes as Samsung announced record earnings in the third quarter, with 13 billion dollars in operating profit and 55 billion dollars in revenue between July and September. 
And to tell us more about this, Professor Kim Se-wan from Iwa Women's University joins us in the studio today. Good to see you again, Professor. Pleasure to be here. Now, Samsung's appointment of its new leadership mm -hmm. comes at an important time amid a leadership vacuum following the arrest of the de facto chief Lee Jae-yong mm -hmm. over bribery charges. How do you assess the current situation, Professor? The business of Samsung Electronics for this year couldn't be better. Mm. The sales revenue is over 55 billion US dollars and, and net profit is over 13 billion US dollars in the last quarter. So this business performance is better than any private corporations in the whole world compared to Google's, Amazon's and, 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 and Microsoft. Mm. And but dark side of the Samsung Electronics is uh, chairman uh, Lee Gun Hee is still hospitalized mm. and his son, the vice chairman, is uh, behind the bars. So given these uh, unprecedented circumstances, we can read two keywords for uh, top uh, management changes. The first is uh, uh, stability of formation. Everyone has been chosen from inside the company. And the second is uh, they want to uh, uh, develop new business opportunities for future. Right. Now, looking at the newly appointed executives, mm -hmm. including the ones today, Professor, we can get a glimpse of Samsung's future management direction. Can you fill us on that? Well, the great performance of Samsung Electronics of today is a result of 10 to 20 years ago's uh, investment and, and, mm. and decisions. So that means there is no guarantee for Samsung Electronics to maintain today's great performance for the next 10 to 20 years. So the most important job of Samsung Electronics of today is uh, b b developing new business opportunities with younger uh, generations uh, like who are more close to new technologies and more aggressive in, in, in taking the risks. Right. Now, Samsung Life Insurance, mm -hmm. Samsung Securities, and other Samsung affiliates will also announce their new leadership, right. their first changes since 2014. Mm -hmm. What can we expect on that, Professor? Actually, for the last several years, there was a huge rumor that Samsung is considering selling all of their financial subsidiaries like life insurance, uh, credit cards, and uh, securities, and so on. Mm -hmm. But it looks to me that they decide to keep this financial business uh, along with Samsung Electronics. But, but the main reason for that is uh, these uh, financial companies are highly intertwined in, in, in Samsung Group's uh, ownership structure. So facing new uh, financial uh, technologies in the global financial market like uh, fintechs, uh, they need to reshuffle their uh, financial uh, companies with uh, younger generations and new management people. Right, Professor. Now, Samsung Electronics has promised to return some $26 billion to shareholders mm -hmm. over the next three years. And it also promised to double its dividends right. next year to nearly $9 billion and keep it at that level until mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your thoughts on this investor-friendly trend? When Samsung uh, Construction and, and, and JL Textile were merging in 2015, two years ago, Mm. Uh, they promised to give out more benefits to shareholders of the Samsung. And for the case of Samsung Electronics, the way up to, to that was repurchasing their own stocks. So theoretically, if a corporation repurchased their own stocks and destroyed them, the price of the uh, stock increases, which is the big benefit to shareholders. But shareholders of Samsung Electronics believes that the Samsung stock is increasing because of the great performance of the Samsung Electronics, not the repurchase of the, their own stocks. Mm. So after that, Samsung Electronics decide to uh, give out more dividends to the Samsung Electronics shareholders. Mm. Okay, Professor. Now, foreign investors who have eagerly sought mm -hmm. better dividends will likely enjoy um, some share of Samsung's vast amount of cash. Mm -hmm. But there are concerns that that might eat into Samsung's R&D investment pool. Now, how do you assess this? Well, Samsung's uh, more benevolent uh, dividend payout plan will give more benefits to foreigners, it is true. But it, need, it needs to be pointed out that Korean corporations on average were extremely stingy in, in giving out their profits in dividends. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Korean corporations' average paying out ratio of dividends is about 25% for the last 10 years. But for the case of United States, it is over 50%. Australia is over 80%. Even mm. China is over 30%. Mm. So Korean co corporations' payout ratio is lower than any country in the world. So 
So it is true that we give out more uh, benefits and, and dividends to foreigners, but in, in the long run, that will attract more uh, foreigners in the long run. So we will have more foreign investment because of that. Well, certainly an exciting time for Samsung's shareholders, Professor, I guess. Thank you for your insight today, Professor. Thank you very much. More than half of all foreign tourists to Korea visit the country after watching Hallyu or Korean Wave content. This according to a survey of around 3,000 people from eight countries including China, Japan and the United States. The poll conducted by the Korea Tourism Organization showed around 56% of respondents chose to visit the country after watching Korean dramas or films. Just under 40% said their visit was influenced by watching travel programs on television. Starting next year, Korea's elderly will receive more health care benefits from the government. Cost reductions will apply on everything from routine checkups to regular prescriptions, with benefits extended to an estimated 82 million cases annually. Our Ella Kim has the details. For the elderly, visiting a hospital or clinic can be a routine occurrence, but the out-of-pocket burden can sometimes be overwhelming. For visits costing up to $13.50, they only pay $1.35. But for anything exceeding that, they bear 30% of the costs. Starting next year, a new reduced cost plan will go into effect. The amount up to $13.50 remains the same, but the patient burden will be lowered on costs exceeding that sum. From $13.50 to $18, it will be 10%. From $18 to $22.50, it's 20%. And above $22.50, it becomes 30%. Prescription costs will be reduced as well. Anything costing up to $9 will only require 90 cents out of pocket, down from $1.08. $9 to $10.80 will be 20%, and above that 30%. Previously, anything above $9 was 30%. Once elderly medical expenses exceed a fixed limit, the individual co-payments will gradually increase. Benefits are expected to change for about 82 million cases at local clinics, dentists, oriental medicine clinics, and pharmacies next year. The Ministry of Health and Welfare also plans to maintain a flat rate for outpatients, as well as reduce the co-payment burden for chronic diseases. Elliot Kim, Business Daily. Top global electric power companies are in Korea's southern city of Gwangju to attend a major international expo. The big names in the field will join forces to exchange ideas and discuss the future of the energy industry. Our Kim mo takes us to the 2017 BIXPO. The 2017 Pikaram International Exposition of Electric Power Technology kicked off on Wednesday in the southwestern city of Gwangju. Hundreds of energy experts from some 270 domestic and foreign companies are participating in a three-day expo, which is being held under the theme Connect Ideas Meet the Fourth Revolution. Korea Energy Power Corporation, the host of the event, says that it hopes to offer access to the latest trends in the energy industry and also create new business and job opportunities. We want to promote Korea's outstanding energy industry and create a venue for global businesses to network with each other. By doing this, we hope to pave the way for local energy companies to advance in the global market. This year's event, the third of its kind, seeks to meet the needs of the fast-changing electric power industry through a range of programs such as the New Technology Exhibition, the International Conference and the International Invention Fair. The programs don't just look at energy alone, but also link energy to broader issues, such as sustainable development and climate change, with displays featuring solar panels and smart city devices. And we know that there's four different things that need to be done to stop climate change. One is to uh, decarbonize electricity. Uh, another is to ensure electrification of things like transport. Another is to reduce waste. And the fourth one is to increase carbon sinks. And within this expo, there are potential contributions to all four of these things. Aside from lectures and exhibitions for industry professionals, there's also plenty for normal visitors to enjoy and learn about. 
Smart home devices, VR and AR experience centers, drones and even the latest robot technologies are on display for visitors to experience. The exposition will also hold cultural events, including a performance by the new Seoul Philharmonic Orchestra, K-pop performances and traditional music concerts throughout its three-day run. Kim mo Business Daily, Gwangju. As Korea enters the era of fourth industrial revolution, the advanced materials industry has become the foundation of new high-tech industries. The country is now taking advantage of its mineral resources and investing heavily in the industry to promote further growth in this promising sector. Take a look. This factory manufactures surface treatment equipment using new materials like plasma. The equipment here enables more detailed and precise surface treatment. So, this is the plasma treatment of plastic plume. testing Plasma is one of the popular and suitable materials for the fourth industrial revolution with sterilization and antibacterial properties. With the rapid market growth of smart products based on the Internet of Things and AI, the importance of advanced multifunctional materials has become more significant. The material is mainly used to bond automobile headliners, seal various sensors, treat semiconductors before coating, and clean plated metal parts in smartphones. We plan to expand its application to biotech and green industries. The advanced materials industry is now expected to be worth nearly $360 billion by 2030. New advanced materials also come with a string of new product developments, which add more value to the industry. Korea's East Coast has become a focal point for the country's materials industry. The region had lagged behind in industrial development due to its isolated environment but it is now the center of advanced materials development based on non-ferrous metals like magnesium, lithium and titanium. Since a free economic zone was established on the East Coast in 2013, the government is planning active support measures for the materials industry. Not only will the East Coast supply raw materials, it will also link up with international partners like Russia, China and North Korea through port access to become a global hub of the non-ferrous metal components industry. Gangwon-do province holds abundant mineral resources like dolomite or silica stones that are the main ingredients of magnesium. As we are located in the Pan-East Coast area, surrounded by China, Russia and Japan, it has the potential to become a regional business center. The region has seen active research and development efforts, starting with a magnesium factory in Gangneung, built by the country's leading steelmaker, POSCO. Infrastructure in the area is expanding to support and develop its materials industry. This research institute is conducting active research on non-ferrous metals like titanium and lithium. Their latest focus is on a powder used in 3D printing. The technology consists of processing non-ferrous metals and then turning it into powder form for various applications. This is a pure titanium powder used in 3D metal printing. It's a metal powder that is highly fluid and has high added value. With its excellent form processing, 3D printing has been identified as one of the key drivers of the fourth industrial revolution. 3D printing requires non-ferrous metal alloys like cobalt, nickel and titanium. 
For titanium, we used an equipment called AIGA for powderization, which costs a lot. Therefore, we are developing a method that can reduce unit cost by 50 percent. In case of Buiga equipment, we use it to turn non-ferrous metals like nickel, cobalt, or neodymium into powder form. This year, the Institute successfully produced a customized 3D-printed human skull for medical patients using their latest technology of titanium powderization. Now they're waiting to transfer this technology to conglomerates that have caught interest. High-quality, low-cost powder production is one of the key elements in the advancement of 3D printing. We developed the core technology through our team of researchers and passed them on to the corporate sector. We believe this will trigger wider distribution in the domestic market. And hopefully, we can move on to supplying the global market as well in the future. The materials industry is becoming Korea's next economic growth engine. Hopes are being pinned on the industry to become a global leader in advanced materials on the back of abundant resources and great infrastructure. And that wraps it up for this Thursday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll be back tomorrow with more business news that matters to you. Until then, goodbye.